Good morning, students. We are happy to have you joining us today. We're heading over to Delrose Farms. So I am very excited to have you all on here and we are going to get started pretty quickly. Now, here's some things that I want to go over. For the best viewing experience, we ask that you make your screens big and go ahead with whatever view your Zoom defaults to. Now, the only other box you need to have open is your question and answer box. That's how you're going to be able to get to myself, your tour guide, and Barb, our farmer, to ask live questions about what you're seeing. Now, aside from that, don't forget we also have our lesson plans online, which you can access through the links that you got uh, from our emails. And then you can also access this recording live as it's happening on YouTube. So for any reason, if, if you get disconnected or if you're joining us a little bit late or watching the uh, recording afterwards, that's available on YouTube. Without any more waiting, we're going to get started and meet our farmer. I'm so excited to have Barb with us today. Welcome, Barb. So Barb, tell us a little bit about yourself and about your farm. So I'm Farmer Barb, and this is Del Rose Farm in beautiful Delaware County, mm -hmm. uh, Bloomville, New York. Uh, we farm here um, with our family. Mm -hmm. um, my husband is Ernie. Today actually is our 41st anniversary. Oh, wow. And yeah. And we have seven children that, you know, have been a part of our farm and, uh, you know, were raised here and got to help with all sorts of chores. And our three sons are farming here with us now, uh, Seth, Kim, and Lad. Although um, our daughters still um, help and our grandchildren come and help. So um, we milk 60 cows. Um, and then we have about a total of 140 head of cattle. We have Holsteins and Brown Swiss, which you'll be able to see in just a little bit. And um, then we also, um, we farm about 500 acres of crop land. Some of that land is used to feed our cattle. And some of it is um, we sell to other farmers to feed their cattle as well as um, we grow some sweet corn and some vegetables, so. Very cool, very cool. So students, you're gonna get to see a lot of what is happening on the farm day to day. What I do wanna share with you is some of the things that we're gonna talk about and see happen either earlier in the morning or later in the evening. So some of that we actually uh, got a little help pre-recording so that way you can see what's really going on, uh, which should be great. Um, so we're just getting a note here. We're hoping uh, everyone can hear us okay. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started, though. So if we could, we're going to jump over to our first section, which I believe we're going to look at actually feeding your cows. Wow, this looks beautiful, Barb. Is this this is at your farm? But yes, it is. That's the that's the dry cow pasture. So the cows you see right up there are our dry cows. So dry cows are cows that um, get some time off before they have their next baby. Um, they, they're not milking, um, they, they get that time off. So um, um, they can just kind of enjoy life and get ready to have um, their next, next calf. calf. Okay, so we're seeing uh, these big long white tubes. What it, What is in those? What are those? So those are what we refer to as ag bags. We okay. store feed in upright silos, um, which you, can see in pictures mm -hmm. um, and you'll see us um, getting feed out of those um, but also the ag bags so this ba ag bag has halage in it okay. which is um, alfalfa and grasses that are chopped and then stored in these ag bags um, without uh, oxygenation okay. so that it ferments so it kind of has like a, a like a lightly pickled smell it's really nice smelling Oh, wow. Very cool. Okay. So this is what you're feeding your cows. Now I can imagine we're about to head into winter. Um, we're getting into when it's colder, uh, the crops, there's nothing growing in winter. So this right. is how we're feeding the cows That's in the winter. Right. Okay. That's right. Which actually our cows get fed, um, the dry cows and the heifers. No, but our, mm. our milking herd gets fed the same way all year round. Now okay. this is straw. Um, so straw is another thing that we put in our mix. Um, which is um, good for the rumen. Cows have four stomachs okay. and they have a fermentation vat called a rumen in their stomach that allows them to eat all sorts of things that you and I can't eat, that okay. we can't utilize. And like, so if we lived in the South um, near citrus, we might put um, orange peels in it. Mm. Um, we might put cotton seed hulls in. They, they eat so many different things. 
Gotcha. So it looks like your son is starting to feed. Right. So this is our herd gets fed. Um, we saw them moving the hay ridge um, with the skid steer. Mm -hmm. We also feed dry hay um, both ends of the day. Okay. So our cows get four different sets of feedings. And so this is our son, Kale, um, feeding out dry hay. And you'll watch when you see that the cows love this dry hay. It's like candy to them. You can see them reaching right now. They're like, okay, I want a piece of that. Yeah. Um, and um, so they eat it right up. And that's a good thing too, because it um, adds another um, element of dry matter, okay. um, a, a dry feed into mm -hmm. their um, into their diet. So you talked about each of these cow's stomachs having these four chambers. So you really got to keep this whole system in this cow happy, which is obviously very different than the way people eat. Exactly. But very cool. I want to highlight what Barb said, that cows can digest these plants and plant matter that we can't. So right. they really serve an important purpose. They're taking something that we couldn't digest and turning it into milk and dairy products right. that we can. That's one very thing cool. that is really um, important, I think, to stress with um, with for people to understand about, um, ruminants, um, like cattle, mm -hmm. goats are ruminants too. There's other mammals that are, but because they have this very specialized rumen, they can eat all sorts of things that would otherwise, uh, go to waste, um, that oh, are yeah. byproducts of other industries, like, you know, of the beer industry of can even cows eat candy near Hershey, oh, cool. um, because you put it into their diet and the diet is balanced by a nutritionist. Um, and we're so seeing that, some balancing right that's now. Right. So this is, um, 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 a scale, okay. um, that tells on our mixing part that tells how much of each feed stuff we're putting in. So we put halogen that came from where the skid steer was moving around mm -hmm. and straw. And then here on the other side of the barn, you can see, uh, there on the left, you can see that those are the upright silos and that's where the corn silage was. And then also, um, we have ground ear corn that okay. um, we um, he will shovel into that mixer, as well as then um, this mix that our nutritionist puts together to balance everything that's higher in protein and it has vitamins and minerals to like totally um, bring that di cow's diet full circle so it's perfectly balanced. Oh, wow. Okay, so these cows are basically have their own nutritionist who are making sure they get the exact perfect amounts of everything exactly. every day. That's right. Wow. Yep. yep. That is pretty cool. And, and it is really important because cows, um, they work really hard, um, a very chill, very mm -hmm. relaxed, mm -hmm. working very hard um, because we try to keep cow comfort um, right there for them. That's the ground ear corn that oh, he's cool. throwing okay. in right now. Okay. Um, but um, it's important for their nutrition to be right on point, that it needs to be perfect. Otherwise, they could get sick. They might not produce as much milk. Mm -hmm. um, they might not be able to um, breed back so that they have another baby. Okay. So that's why it's important. Oh, cool. So we're seeing this blending mixing now. Right. I know I've heard farmers describe it to me in different ways. Sometimes it's like a casserole, right, with all the ingredients in one or like blending or juicing or a tossed salad. Right. Um, Yep. Now, why, why blend it up? Why not just put right. all the ingredients in front of the cows? Well, cows are just like people. So, you know, since it's almost Halloween, if you sat on the table and said to all of you, um, you can eat whatever you want. What is the thing you're probably going to go for? I'm going to eat the candy. You're probably, you're going to go the for the candy. candy. All right. And cows, there are certain parts of what's mixed up in there that they like better than others. And so they will, they would like eat that up and maybe not take the mouthfuls of everything they should, just like we as people sometimes make poor choices. So if you mix it all up, mm -hmm. then they can get everything they need in every bite. Okay. So, okay. so basically now what we're watching is him kind of clean the plate to make room for the next That's right. feeding. So okay, gotcha. we clean the mangers, um, before we feed, put down the new feed. Um, so that's what he does. And now that leftover feed, um, we have a small herd of beef cows. Okay. They get that as well as the dry cows too. Okay. So basically nothing goes to waste here. No, no, nope. we don't waste nothing anything. Nothing goes to waste. Nope. Okay. We love that. Yes. And we can see all the cows are very, very calm and relaxed in the barn. We see them kind of, I mean, checking stuff out. Yep. Um, but you know, I'm kind of curious, how big are these cows? I mean, we're seeing them and some of our students may never have been next to a cow. Right, right. So 
the average weight of a cow in our barn is okay. uh, 1600 pounds. Oh my gosh. So, I mean, sometimes I think it's hard for people if they haven't been around a cow, yeah. they tend to think they might be like a St. Bernard dog or a pony, <laughs> right. but they're way bigger than they're that. They're way bigger than they're that. Way bigger. Okay. So if you're talking about a 1600 pound animal, how much food are cows eating in a day? Like how much do I need to feed this cow? A lot. A, a lot. lot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, holy moly. Because they not only have to like um, maintain themselves, right? they also are giving about 10 gallons of milk a day, which mm-hmm. It takes a okay. lot of, uh, it takes a lot of um, energy. It's like, just like people running marathons. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. Oh, you yes, know, so, thanks, you know, Very so, fair. Um, but, uh, so they feed, eat about up to 120 pounds uh, or so of, um, of feed. Um, they each also day. Drink each day, each cow, each cow, how many cows are in the barn? 60. So that's a lot of feed that gets mixed up. Okay. Every day. Okay. So we, I don't know if we've, but you see those little blue things. Those are their water buckets. Okay. Because, and they know how to push the button on the water bucket to get their own water when they mm. need it, mm. which is okay. really important because they need a lot of water too. Cause milk yep. is a lot of their, you know, it's a liquid. So yeah. they Makes need sense. a lot of water. Makes sense. So we had, uh, we have our first student question coming in, which is asking, um, do they stay in their stalls? Or that I know you were explaining to me, Barb, that they actually do go out to an exercise yard, but they're in their stalls when they're eating to make sure that nobody's pushing around, right. picking on each other. Right. So you want to like kind of explain that? That's right. So, yeah. so um, we have a tie stall, not a free stall. Some barns are free stalls where the cows um, move around all mm-hmm. the time and then mm-hmm. they go to um, a feed bunk to eat or get pushed to a milking parlor gotcha. to, to be milked. Our cows are in a tie stall, which is like more formerly traditional. What you saw a lot of farms were a tie stall like ours are. So they go out for exercise. Yep. And when they're dry, they're, they're always, you know, enjoying green pastures and the, as young animals, like Mm -hmm. as heifers, they are too, but milking cows stay in the barn because the barn is extremely, uh, we keep it, uh, the temperature they love, which is climate controlled. Yeah. Climate control Mm because cows like 55 is their favorite 50, 55 is their favorite temp. And so we, in the summer, um, those fans, um, make sure that that temperature stays good there. Um, their water is there. They sleep on mattresses, bedding on top of the mattresses. Okay. Um, and we clean, um, you know, the manure down and scrape the grates in back of them so that they stay nice and clean. One more question before we jump to our first quiz students is which do you see that the cows prefer? Like, do they, do, do some cows like the stalls better than being outside? Do some cows like I, being on the exercise area? What's I think our, well, cows are creatures of habit. So oh, okay. Okay. if our cow, say if one of our cows got sold and went to a free stall, it would be, um, very disruptive. Yes. For them. It would okay. be a huge transition for her. And, okay. um, she, she would probably hopefully, um, mm-hmm. make that transition, but it would not be easy. Okay. Just the way freestyle cows, when they, um, if they change, get changed to a tie stall, it's a challenge because like I said, cows like what they're used to, what they've, they've grown accustomed to. Got but it. I will say cows, when they go outside, they, like jumping around and having the, you know, time of their life running around. But then within 10 minutes, they're like, okay, I want to get back in because they like their bed. They like their food. They like their water right there. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right, students. I hope you were paying attention. We're going to jump over to our first pop quiz. So let's go ahead and roll that quiz.
All right, students, you've been hopefully paying attention. Hopefully you got all your answers correct. Uh, as you can see, the answers are now up on the screen. Looking pretty good. Like I said, I'm pretty sure you were all paying attention, but Barb, I think it's time to check out the milking process overall, right? I mean, that's what, that's what the cows do best. That's what we know them to do. So this is your barn where all your cows are housed and where they're milked at their stalls, which is pretty, pretty relaxing for them. It's kind of like work goes to them. Right. Work from home? That's Maybe right. is this That's work right. from home for exactly. cows? Okay. Yes. Very cool. Now we had a question come in from one of the students is what uh, kinds of cows do you have here? We saw some different colors as we're going down the line. And as we watch him kind of get things prepped, what kind of cows do you have? So we, the, the black and white cows and the red and white cows are Holsteins. So, okay. um, there's a few red and whites. I, it's a recessive hair color, just like I have red hair. Some some Holsteins end up red and white. Oh, got it. Okay. And then the brown cows that you saw are brown Swiss. Oh, okay. So those are the two breeds that we have at our at our farm. Now, why uh, why either of those breeds, or what are those breeds known for? So Holsteins are the most popular breed in the United States, over 90% of um, milking cows in, in this country are Holsteins. And I grew up on a farm that was a Holstein farm. Okay. So I'm a Holstein girl. A little bit so, of family tradition. Yep, Got it. Exactly. Got and it. then um, my husband grew up on a brown Swiss farm and his ah. grandparents were from Switzerland. Okay. So that's how the brown Swiss come in. I have to say that you know, there's people that their favorite is different breeds than that. There's Jerseys, okay. Ayrshire's, Guernsey's, Milking Shorthorn, in addition to the, the breeds that I talked about. I say that everyone's favorite breed of cows is kind of like picking a football team. Uh, Everyone has a reason why. Mm -hmm. Like I might pick a certain team mm -hmm. for a certain reason. Mm -hmm. And the other person that's cheering for the other team will say, yep. you're absolutely wrong. That's kind of the same way with cows. There's, gotcha. you know, there's a reason that you, that you love them. And a lot of it does have to do with family tradition, I think, quite frankly. So we're seeing your son get set up for milking here. How many times a day are you milking these cows? So we milk two times a day here. We have in the past, uh, but we haven't for a long time, milked three times a day. Okay. Um, right now he's putting... Um, um, the, the milk, the tit dip into the teat dip dispenser um, okay. sprayers. Um, as you can see, there's a bunch of, um, different tubs of things. Mm -hmm. Um, it's really, really important to keep everything really, really clean. Cows um, clean, the equipment clean. Mm -hmm. Um, so we, we wash, but we also sanitize before we, um, before, before we milk, um, our milk tank, when it gets emptied by the, 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 um, truck, when, when the milk truck in. comes, then it's cleaned. Um, it's just really important because milk is, um, we all know what milk is. It's an amazing, delicious, um, so scrumptious, fresh, fresh <laughs> but it's important that it needs to be cold and it needs to be in a clean container Got that. Um, because we don't want anything to, to contaminate it. So that's why we Make sure everything's super duper clean. Now, I know you said before you have 60 cows in this barn. So that's 60 correct. cows being milked twice a day. So that's 120 milkings in theory, right? right? Okay. Right. Now, another one, a question that we got, we were seeing these cows be milked. We had some students ask if you have any bulls and then um, do you also raise your own heifers? And, and spoiler alert, guys, we're going to see the calves and heifers. So. Okay. So before <laughs> we talk about that, this is, oh, um, this is important. Kale Sorry. putting um, the milker on. You first saw him that he sprayed the teats with mm -hmm. the teat dip, which is like a disinfectant that cleans the teats off well. Mm -hmm. It also helps the cow to stimulate her milk let down. Oh. There's a hormone oxytocin that makes a cow let down her milk. And her, when he, um, wipes um yeah her mam her teats off mm -hmm. it helps with that and see now you see the milker has been put on and see the milk being oh, let wow. down yeah you could see it right in the bottom of the unit that that's what you want to see you want to see the milk unit go on and you want to see milk flowing into the uh, into the milking unit oh wow very cool now how long will it take her to actually finish milking out uh, about five minutes oh my gosh very actually quick. this cow's name is baby b that's being milked right there that's what her name is. okay very Our cows cool. all have names so yes yes that's awesome. baby b yeah okay so now i'm seeing too that basically with this milking process nobody 
is is this this milk is staying completely in this sanitized clean line no no one's touching it no one's like moving a pail dumping like it's going straight from her into this line into the tank is that that's correct? correct that's okay. correct yes oh my gosh look at she's just hanging out yep oh so you were mentioning that each of these cows have names um what is this ear tag for then right so that's, oh baby b so that's <laughs> baby b and this is her name card in the barn too okay that gives information what her dad's name is and her mom's name and how mm -hmm. much milk she's given but every cow in our barn has its own very special number. It's an 84,000 number. And um, before I finish with that, see, yeah. he's spraying, spraying the cow's teats again. with a teat dip to make sure that the teats um, stay nice and healthy. Ah, so okay. anyway, every cow has its own very special number. It's an 84,000 number um, that is on that, on that, that, that tag. tag. Okay. Um, every cow has its set of tags, a dot tag, and then a flap tag. And that cow, that's the only cow that has that number. It, so that if something was to happen, if there was a health issue, if she got sold and um, um, there was something wrong with her or there was exposures that happened, mm -hmm. every cow could be traced to its original where it came from got it and what it's what it's um health history was basically. gotcha okay so we got someone asking how much milk is each of your cows making right. so each um one of our cows is making about 90 pounds per day that's in the bulk tank that's just okay. the beginning of where the milk has went through the pipeline mm -hmm. and into um that tank which this tank will be full at the end of the day, but this is just the beginning of the mil milking. Gotcha. And you can see the agitator, it stirs it around because mm -hmm. milk has fat, a uh, fat portion, oh, okay. as well as, um, you know, um, milk solids portion. And you want to keep that stirring. And that also helps with the cooling process because milk, oh. when milk comes off the cow, it's the same temperature of the cow, which is about 95 to 100 degrees when it comes into that milking unit and it needs to be, um, refrigerate, you know, drop down mm -hmm. to, um, 40 or to 34 degrees yeah. by, um, within an hour. Okay. So there's different things that we do. There's a, the tank is refrigerated. And then we also have a tube cooler that has a jacket of cold water that runs on the outside of the, the, the pipe okay. of, warm milk and there's like a heat exchange. Um, oh, cool. Farmers like to save money and um, do things that they can to recycle. And stuff. Yeah. So very cool. So we're seeing here the milk tank, obviously pull up, that's going to pick up the milk, take right. it to the processing right. plant. Now that tank is refrigerated. So basically, let me see if I got this right. No, actually the, tra oh, the, the truck, truck is like a big thermos. It oh, isn't, it isn't, okay. it doesn't have a compressor. So Wonderful. it's really important that the milk is super cold in your tank that mm -hmm. is refrigerated in yes. your milk house. Mm -hmm. And then it's pumped into the truck that takes it down the road. That is a thermos. Tank. It was gotcha. like a big thermos. So gotcha. So that means though, that milk is very fresh. So basically how, like for those students in schools today watching, how long does it take from milk to go from your farm to the school? Two to three days. Two days. Okay, cool. So depending on, you know, where yeah. you're like our milk just goes 15 miles down the road to the processing plant. We live fairly close to a processing plant. Got it. Um, Got so. it. That's incredible. Now, I know uh, some students were asking specifically how many gallons does each of your cows right. So um, there's 8.6 pounds. Ooh, math problems, students. Yes. 8.6 pounds of milk in a gallon. So, um, our cows are giving about 10 gallons a day because they're milking over 90 pounds. So Okay. Um, now, the last question before we jump to our quiz here is, do the cows enjoy being milked? They do. I will okay. say that, so when a cow has her baby the first time, she's two years old. Mm -hmm. So that's the first, a cow has to have a baby in order, it's a mammal. Yep. So in order for it to lactate or to give milk, it has to have to give birth yep. the first time or the first few times. Um, it's a new process for her. It's okay. a different feeling. So it sometimes is some of them are bothered by it more than others, but by and large, everyone's a happy camper when they're being milked. Okay. Okay. Got it. So very much. So most of them enjoy it. Awesome. Okay. Students, I hope you were paying attention. We're going to jump into our second quiz. And then when we come back, we're going to check out the cutest members of the farm. If you ask me, we're going to check out the calves.
All right, students, I know that you probably got 100% on that quiz um, because you were paying such close attention. I think, though, it's time to head over to your calves, Barb. I think that they are just pretty amazing. Before we jump over that way, we did have a couple of questions that I just want to make sure we get in there, which, of course, one would be is uh, how much does it cost to raise a cow? So, Alex, let's take us on over to the calf barn while we chat about that. So um, I tend to look at it. We try to look at raising our young stock as an investment in our future. Got it. Not that well it costs, but it does cost money. And it costs um, about $2,000 to raise an animal is. from birth to before she, before she finally gets to the milking herd. Got so, it. So we're seeing your calves and heifers. We're seeing your young stock. So that in this shovel, that's a oh, shovel yeah. full of bedding. So oh, this is okay. the, the, what we use, the medium we use to bed our herd, both our calves and our cows. So that you, you know, it's yeah. kiln dried sawdust. Um, it's important that it's kiln dried um, so that there's, because wood is um, a nature's thing and it can have pathogens. So it's kiln dried to make sure that it's killed so that none of our animals get those types of exposures. Got it. Got it. Okay. So obviously you fed calves earlier this morning. So we're, right. we're catching you doing some of this work here, which is great. Um, now you were sharing with us that, uh, each cow has to have a calf in order to start the milking process. How many calves are they having in a year? Is it just one? What, what's that like? So the goal is, is that you have that each cow calves once per year, because okay. it takes just like, um, a human is pregnant mm -hmm. for nine months with their baby. Yep. It's the same for cows, cows and, 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 and humans, um, have the same gestation length. We call that, okay. um, that's how long their pregnancy lasts. So, um, you like the cow has her calf and then you hope that within three to four months after she has her baby, um, that you, um, that you, um, she will breed back so that she has another baby. This is, oh, so cool. you can see, this is kale putting, um, the teats on the, um, the buckets mm -hmm. that they drink their milk out of that the calves drink their milk buckets, uh, drink their milk out of. So you can see them. Oh, um, okay. So, um, every calf has its own nipple because you don't want to cross contaminate, contaminate. So that's got the it. Way we do it. Um, now, how long will these calves drink milk? Um, for two, about two months. Okay. Um, about two it months. depends on, um, growth patterns, how, right. how much, they also start eating um, hay and um, their calf starter, their feed. Okay. It, it's important that they're eating a certain amount of their calf feed Got so that we know that their Rubens are developing pro properly. In this one, you can see there's one of our brown Swiss babies. Gotcha. You can see here, that's a brown Swiss baby. Okay. Whereas the other ones in the, the first pen were um, Holstein, Holstein babies. So now, uh, our, you said our calves are drinking this for about 60 days. And then how much are they growing each day then when they're drinking, when they're still on milk in right. that first 60 days? Well, I mean, it, it varies uh, okay. depending on it, but about two pounds per day or two so. Two pounds per day. Um, because they start out that they're about 80 pounds. And then okay. um, when you wean them, they're probably 150 to 200. I mean, you know, it's. Um, wow. Yeah. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. I got, we got to back this up. These, these are born 80 pounds. Yes. That is a big baby. It is a big baby. That's a big baby. Those are the brownies again. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, the brown Swiss girls. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's so interesting. So then when is a calf fully grown? Obviously we're seeing these little ones here still drinking milk. So within that first 60 days, we're going to see some of the older ones here in a minute. When is that calf or that calf technically transitioned from heifer to cow? So when she has her baby. Oh, there you go. Right. Just we like talked I had about said that. before. Okay. That's right. But there is many stages. So there's, you know, the newborns, which the kids where you see right now where we're feeding and we're putting grain, Kale's putting grain in the bucket, them drinking their milk. They're like, we can, that's the nursery side of the calf barn. Okay. They're still receiving their, the, receiving milk. They haven't mm -hmm. been weaned yet. Um, they have, you know, take more intensive care because gotcha. they're babies, just like our babies are, you know, that they, they need a lot of. TLC to make sure that they're growing and that they're 
um, they're, they're clean. Um, yeah, they, you, you have to watch them because their immune systems are also growing. Now, this is Kale putting um, a calf jacket on one of our baby calves, which I needed a jacket this morning. It was exactly. cold. It's time. Exactly. <laughs> so um, when it gets to be chilly, um, we uh, put calf jackets on all our calves. Um, this helps them stay comfortable. It's on the little kids, right? The, the, the babies, the mm -hmm. newborn more in the nursery end of it. Mm -hmm. And they'll keep their jackets on um, until they're getting old enough, closer to weaning. Um, mm -hmm. You can see that they're able to like, um, take care of controlling their temperature, just the way like gotcha. when a, a human baby, we tend to wrap it in a blanket and keep it okay. nice and warm. And then as it starts to move around more, you know, it, you know, it just wears clothes more like the rest of us. It's Got the it. same thing with a, uh, with a so we're seeing some of those slightly older ladies, mm -hmm. uh, or not older ladies, but I guess our, our teenagers, right? right? Our right. elementary that's school the, teenagers. That's right. Yep. So they've got these cool little ear earrings right. rocking these. What so are those? That's that. That's those ear the ear tag okay. system we talked about. When they're born, they get a blue dot, and they're on that blue dot. You can't see it well. It has that eighty four thousand number. That okay. is very very much theirs. After we send their information to the breed association that tells when they were born and their mom and their dad and, and, and this very specific number for them, then a new tag that has their name and their dad's name and the month and the year of their birthday is made. And that will go in the other ear where Got it. like right now you can't yeah. see anyone in, in that ear, but that's where her, her new tag will go. So we've had a lot of questions coming in, which is how long will these calves or cows uh, live? What's the life expectancy? And then what, what does life look like maybe after they transition off of your farm? Gotcha. Okay. So um, the whole idea with um, our milking herd is that um, when cows become older and that they're get that they're part of the milking herd is for them to continue to give milk. Um, because it is a business. We mm -hmm. love them. They have names. Um, we are very, very um close to our animals. But um part of it is is that it is it is a business. And so in order for us to be able to stay in business is these cows have to give milk mm -hmm. and that's how we get paid in order to stay in business. Got it. Um, so they need to breed back every year. Okay. And so that's what dictates usually what happen, whether or not how long they, they stay. stay. The herd. But we have a cow um, right now that's almost 13 years old. Okay. Um, we have seven. Se I, one of my favorite cows, Roulette, is, um, is um, seven. So we have, but then we also have the young kids, which I have to say, it's fun because we have the old, older ladies, but mm -hmm. then we have, you look forward to these young Next girls generation. that we, yes, yeah. that we, you know, you put the care into and you say, oh, I wonder what, what, how, how they'll look when they cab in. I wonder how much milk they'll give, mm -hmm. um, what their temperament will be, um, that type of thing. So, um, and then how many calves do you usually have at one time? Or like at any given time, we'll say like, like on, on milk, for example, so in that first 60 days. Um, it, it's more typical here to say about eight or so, eight to eight to 10, but it totally depends. If you get a bunch of bull calves and the bull calves get sold to the market, um, we do not have bulls on the farm. We don't raise bulls. Um, I have concerns with safety and a mm -hmm. bull, um, there has been some um, very scary um, accidents to farmers with bulls. And so that's why we make that choice not to. We do artificial insemination for breeding our, our cattle. Um, and so, um, you know, it depends on how many heifer calves we've had. Okay. So we had one more question before we head over to our calf questions for all of you students. One of those was how much would any, like one of your animals sell for? That was one of the questions. And then also how much money you talked about it being a business does each cow bring in? So we'll start with like, let's say a, a two-year-old, for example, or a lady in the milking herd. What, what, what's the cost of a cow like that? If one of our students wants to go home and get into this. Well, it, in the bigger picture, it varies depending on what a cow's pedigree is or, okay. or what, but there's, um, different type people make choices to buy different kinds of animals for different reasons. But right now the market is quite strong for, okay. um, for animals. Um, and so I'm going to use it more as a market, you know, Got utilize it. the market. 
And so right now it's pretty common, I'd say that people are having to pay about $2,000 for a, what we call a Springer. A Springer is a cow that's going to have her baby for the first time, gotcha. which is probably the most common age of a milky cow or of an so animal to, to be purchase. bred. So, okay. Yeah. Got it. Now, now we asked, we had talked about, obviously they're making, um, over 80 pounds of milk a day. Right. Mm -hmm. And that each of your cows is making that uh, the 60 of them. So what, what does that mean? Uh, dollars and cents wise, how much money is that in milk perhaps let's say per cow per year, mm -hmm. just so, cause that was one of the questions our students had. Now I know I'm going to guess depends on milk price. So obviously you guys pay a certain price in the grocery store that stays kind of stable, Farmers' prices fluctuate a lot. So right. let's talk about like right now, for right. example. So right now, milk price is lower than it was a year ago, but it is much healthier than what it was three years ago. Okay. Three years ago, it was not, it was very, very hard. Very hard. Very Got hard. Um, so, um, and we get paid per hundred pounds of milk that we oh. sell. We don't get paid per gallon, which is... Different, different than like how uh, the logistics are uh, as far as how people purchase their milk mm -hmm. at the store and how we get paid for our milk. So, um, and, and so we're getting about $20 a hundred, which uh, per hundred pounds, uh, which is an okay price, but right now our input costs, which those are the things that, um, we have to purchase such as feed, um, for growing our crops, seed, repairing our equipment, fertilizer, fuel to run our tractors, um, electricity, taxes are all types of the input costs that we have in order. And that doesn't talk about like the purchase of the farm, Got um, it. like as far as that. So farmers margins are never huge. I would have to say that we want to make a decent living. Yep. Sometimes it's very challenging, but I have to say, um, we love what we do. Um, the, if, we actually, Barbara, I'll, I'll, before we, before we go further, we had one of our students ask, what's your favorite part of raising cows before we give them this calf question mm. or, or questions? Um, I should say. Well, it, there's a lot of it. That's well, really a lot. A lot of it. <laughs> but I have to say that it's really wonderful to like see a calf come into this world, you know, help the mom birth, mm -hmm. uh, you know, bring it to, to in front to its mommy and, uh, you know, have her clean it off and make sure that it, it's given, you know, it's colostrum and get a good start to see that animal grow. And then it have its own calf and become a part of the your, herd. your milking herd. Oh, very I mean, cool. there, there's a lot of really wonderful things about, um, raising cattle and being around cattle, but I have to say, um, just that being able to see the perpetual reality yeah. of that is really, really nice. Yeah. All right, students, you got one more quiz and then we'll be back to close you out. So jump on over you answer those questions. I know you're going to get them right.
All right, students, I know you guys killed those questions, got them all down. You know a lot more about calves and how the farm works now. Um, so before we leave you to the rest of your day for school, I just want to take a minute, of course, to say thank you so much to Farmer Barb for opening up the farm for us and showing us around. We really appreciate it. But of course, Barb, where, where can we find more information about your farm? Are you guys on social media? Where can the students go? Yeah, so um, we do have, um, we're, I'm on Facebook as mm -hmm. Barbara Hanselman, and we also have a Delrose Farm page on Facebook. Cool. And then we also are on Instagram, so. Got it. So students, you can go check out the happenings right. of the farm as they're going on. A reminder too, if you enjoyed this tour, we still have two more virtual farm tours, one in November, one in December on completely different farms. Barb would recommend, even though it's not her farm, still, still that they're going to be good. Um, so definitely you're going to see a QR code here in just a minute to grab those. Definitely sign up for those tours. See a different farm, see something a little new and exciting. They're popping up right here on the screen. Also access our free uh, dairy lesson plans that do meet curriculum standards. We appreciate all the questions you send in. We get to as many of them as we can. And of course, you can always join us. We have one more tour happening at 1130 today with Barb. And then if you can't make that one, join our next tour, which will be at Ideal Dairy. Thank you so much, Barb. Anything else you want to leave with our students before we I head off? I just wanted to say, as you look, um, the, the over, you know, the drone of us is to remind people that we do live in the New York City watershed, our farm is. And so we okay. do extra things to protect the waters here. Um, gotcha. We live right on the Delaware River and Roses Brook. And um Farmers do. They work really hard to conserve and take care of the land and the water. And, um, you know, part of being part of New York City Watershed has kind of amplified that for us. Oh, wow. OK, very cool. Yeah, we were so busy talking about how cool these cows are. We, we forgot to talk about some of the land stuff. I mean, you know, you guys, you love the cows. We love the cows. So definitely, though, we appreciate everything you guys do to protect our local communities, keep help keep our water uh, clean, and of course, produce a wonderful, nutritious, dense product. So go, go students today, support Barb, have a glass of milk, have some cheese, cheese have some yogurt, yogurt whatever it is. Whatever, yes, eat it ice all, cream. lots of it. Have it all. But thank you, students. You have a great rest of your day, and we'll catch you on our next tour.